All right, guys, we're looking at 0654 um, winter 2019, and we're looking at paper 42, question number three. Okay, let's have a look. Familiar situation. We're being asked to take two of our bits of the electromagnetic spectrum and place them into their correct positions. Okay, we're looking this time at X rays and gamma radiation. Okay, place them in their correct places in the incomplete electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, you should know that X-rays and gamma radiation come over this side on the right-hand side of visible light, on the same side as ultraviolet, and that means that they are high frequency, low wavelength. Okay, X-rays slightly lower frequency than gamma radiation. On this side here, so we put our two answers in. Okay, obviously any time I do this, I try and complete it for you just to remind you. On this side here, we've got microwaves, which are next to infrared, and radio waves, which are our longest wavelength. Okay, so over here, we've got high wavelength, low frequency. Okay. Next one, you are being asked to discuss an application of gamma radiation specifically in a hospital. Okay. So a keyword there being in the hospital. And the idea here, this is radiation which can be used to treat cancer. All right, be careful over here. I've noticed in previous times, some people have written chemotherapy here. Careful, chemo, the chemo means chemical. All right, this is chemical therapy. The therapy that we use with um, gamma rays is actually something called radiotherapy. All right, so just be careful there. If you're talking about this, try not to use the word chemotherapy because that's not necessarily the same. All right. We then got a discussion about our hospital with a generator, and it has um, this for emergency use. And we're asked to think about the uh, energy transfers. Let's think about it first. Let's think about what happens in a generator. We've got fuel being burnt, okay? So the chemical energy inside my fuel becoming thermal energy. All right, so we basically, we're burning the fuel. Okay, we then have um, that thermal energy becoming some kind of kinetic energy, okay? Now, the reason we've got that, we think about there are steam-powered um, uh, generator, okay? You've got the idea that thermal energy boiling water and turning that water into gas, into steam, and causing this thing to rotate, okay? So we're causing a turbine rotates, okay? Well, as a result, as we know from our study of electromagnetism, um, when you have that rotation turning into electrical energy, then you've got electromagnetic induction. Now, in an answer, you would not be required to write these little bits in the brackets, but I'm just trying to explain you here to you hear the thinking here. Burning the fuel, releasing thermal energy. Thermal energy then heats something and becomes kinetic in the terms of the turbine, and then the kinetic energy therefore becomes an electrical um, power supply. Okay, we're then told about the efficiency, very low efficiency of our generator, 25%. Well, remember the total energy here is 100, and if you've got efficiency of 25%, that means 25% of the energy put in goes to something useful. In other words, 75% of the energy is wasted. Okay, I've written in the brackets here, 25% of the energy is useful. Really, either of these statements would probably work as an answer here. It's only a one mark question. Last one. Okay, nice and short, this question. We've got an isotope strontium-89 um, is used in the treatment of bone cancer. Okay, notice, notice. Okay, you've got the um, you've got the answer really up here to question two uh, down at the bottom here, although it's a different type of um, radiation. Okay, you're told that strontium-89 decays by beta particle. All right, this is one that's less common in our past papers. You've got to remember that your beta particle. I'll write it again over here. Is beta zero with a minus one. The reason it's zero is because a beta particle is a fast-moving electron. All right, and um, the reason that there's a minus uh, and, and therefore has no nucleons. The reason it's a minus one is because what happens during that process is we gain a proton, okay? A neutron essentially becomes a proton. So we take our zero minus one, we put it on the right-hand side here. Usually the decay particle goes over here, 
all right, 0 minus 1. We've got 38 and 89, and we know that the numbers have to balance. Well, 89, take away my 0, just leaves me with 89. Yeah, and then 38 take away minus 1 is going to give me 39. Okay, you are told that the element produced there is yttrium. Okay, uh, I then used the periodic table to have a quick look and found that the symbol for yttrium and its atomic number there were Y and 39 respectively. So that's all for question 3.